So in the last few videos, we've been talking about the PN junction. And in this video, we're going to start using that knowledge about the PN junction to analyze the PN junction diode, which is, uh, you may have seen its circuit symbol before, or just the diode in general. It looks like this if, you, if it's drawn on a circuit diagram. Uh, and our goal in this video, or the series of videos that follows, is to find what happens when we apply a voltage across this diode. In other words, how much current do we get flowing through it, depending on the voltage? Uh, or we want to find what's called its IV characteristics, which is just a fancy way of saying it's current uh, as a function of voltage. Well, what is a PN junction diode, first of all? Well, it's, uh, it's wonderfully simple. It's just a PN junction. So we've got our on our P side, our negatively charged acceptors. Uh, we've got at equilibrium, we've got on the N side our positively charged donors. We've got the depletion region, so nothing, nothing unusual yet. Uh, the interesting part is what happens when we apply a voltage to this diode. So when we apply a voltage like this. And the circuit diagram equivalent would be uh, like so. So if we've got a, a diode, it's just applying a positive voltage to the P side of the diode relative to the N side. And so we want to know what happens, uh, what happens to this PN junction and how much current, if this is a voltage VD, how much current flows uh, through this diode ID and what else happens to the PN junction diode. So what happens, for example, to the PN junction itself, to the depletion region. Uh, and to answer these questions, we're gonna approach it from two angles. Uh, first, to get sort of a more intuitive uh, heuristic understanding of what's happening, we're gonna use the energy band model uh, or energy band diagrams. Um, and then after we sort of have an intuition for what's going on there, we're gonna sprinkle on uh, a little bit of mathematics and then move to using the continuity equation and solving the continuity equation uh, is going to allow us to figure out the carrier distribution, so n and p as a function of x, uh, as a function, a function of position and time. And these will collectively allow us to find the current flowing through the diode. So first we're gonna start off with the energy band model. So we know that if we, if we draw just the PN junction energy band diagram, it's gonna look something like this. So we've got our conduction band here. We've got our Fermi level, which at equilibrium is flat. Uh, it's very important. You should get that tattooed somewhere. And then we've got our valence band, as well as our, I like drawing the intrinsic Fermi energy just because it gives me, a, gives me an easier way to reference things and a more limited set of equations to use. And we said in the previous video that this voltage or this uh, energy potential barrier here is called VBI or the built-in potential barrier. And so this is our this is our complete PN junction band diagram. So what happens when we apply a positive voltage to the P side of the PN junction? And remember that this is the P side and this is the N side of the PN junction. Well if we apply a positive voltage to the to this left-hand side, we're going to drag down these energy bands relative to the N side. And the reason we're dragging them down instead of dragging them up is because this diagram is drawn to represent the energy of electrons. Uh, if you read it from bottom to top. So applying a positive voltage to the left-hand side actually decreases the energy of the, of the electrons or increases its negative energy. So if we kind of drag down these energy bands, so let's redraw the conduction band first, uh, it's still gonna end up at the same place because the end side, nothing's happening to the end side. Uh, so the intrinsic energy also gets dragged down. Uh, the valence band energy also gets dragged down and interestingly, the Fermi energy has to also get dragged down because 
we know that well over here, so on the very left-hand side of this diagram, this is still a p-type material. Uh, so it's still got a dominant number of holes within the material. So we expect that the Fermi energy is very close to the valence band. And so interestingly, this means that the Fermi energy actually does change uh, now throughout the semiconductor. And actually, there's two Fermi energies that we have to deal with uh, separately, the Fermi energy for electrons and the Fermi energy for holes. So now that I've dragged down these band diagrams, I'm actually going to erase the, the original ones so that we're we're left with a more clear, uh, more clear diagram of what exactly is going on. So, I'm going to leave this uh, this little uh, built-in potential notation here. But this is our this is our new band diagram. This is what it looks like after we apply a voltage to it. And one of the big things that you'll notice is the built-in potential or the potential that prevents electrons from jumping from the N side to the P side, and that prevents holes from jumping from the P side to the N side, that's reduced. And it's reduced by the amount of the voltage we apply. So the new, our new barrier is now Q times VBI minus VD. And this is really interesting because it kind of intuitively implies that anywhere we've got a VBI, in the equations that we've developed, we can just replace that with a VBI minus VD. And indeed, this is true uh, so long as we meet certain assumptions, which I'll be going over in the video analyzing the diode with a continuity equation. Now, the next step involves uh, figuring out how the concentrations of holes and electrons change as we apply a voltage. So what do we know? Um, well, we know the concentration of holes uh, on the P side, and we know the concentration of electrons on the N side, at least uh, far away from the, from the junction, because we're assuming that the electric fields are all distributed within the PN junction. That's the abrupt uh, depletion region approximation. So we want to find a relationship between the holes on the P side and the holes on the N side. And likewise, we want a relationship between the electrons on the N side and the electrons on the P side. And to be really precise, uh, because we know that these electron and hole concentrations are going to be functions of space uh, and possibly time, um, if we've got our PN junction, and we've got the depletion region in the middle with negatively charged acceptors and positively charged donors. And we're interested in relating uh, the electron and hole concentrations on each side. So uh, let's just focus on holes for now. So we want to know the hole concentration at the very edge of the depletion region on the P side. And so this is generally called uh, P, P0. Uh, the zero subscript is just to indicate that the X coordinate is equal to zero relative to the depletion region. And we're also interested in the whole concentration on the N side uh, at X equals zero relative to the depletion region. And we want a relationship between these two. Uh, so we want to find P of the N side at X equals zero as a function of P on the P side at X equals zero and the diode voltage. So we want to figure out a relationship between these, these three quantities. And we know one, uh, it's not quite what we want, but we can massage it a little bit so that it is. Uh, we remember in the last video, or w one of the previous videos, that the built-in potential was just equal to the thermal voltage phi t times the logarithm of the acceptor concentration on the P side uh, times the donor concentration on the N side divided by Ni squared. Uh, well, this quantity, interestingly, uh, is one over 
the hole concentration on the end side. And the reason for that is that if the number of donors on the end side is just approximately equal to ND, and we know that N naught P naught is equal to NI squared, that's just at equilibrium, that's always true. Uh, and if N naught is approximately equal to ND, then P naught is equal to NI squared divided by ND, or one over P naught is equal to ND divided by NI squared. And this NA, likewise, if NA is much larger than the intrinsic carrier concentration, then NA is approximately equal to the number of holes on the P side, or the concentration of holes on the P side. So this quantity is P, P naught. So the equation for built-in potential is going to give us exactly the relationship we need. Uh, so VBI is just equal to phi T times the log of P, P naught divided by P, N naught. And if we rearrange this, uh, so we divide by phi T and then exponentiate, we'll get that P, N naught is equal to P, P naught times e to the minus uh, VBI over phi t. And remember, previously, we just said that if we want to know what happens when we apply a voltage, we can just replace VBI with VBI minus VD. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So we've, our final equation looks like this. Uh, Pn naught is just equal to Pp naught times e to the minus VBI minus VD over phi t. And this equation is moving forward that relates whole concentration on both the P side and the N side as a function of the diode voltage is going to allow us to solve the continuity equation. And likewise, we can write uh, an equation for the electron concentration on the P side. It's just equal to the electron concentration on the N side uh, times e to the minus VBI minus VD over phi t. So we expect the electron concentration on the P side to be much less than that on the N side uh, because we've got a negative exponential here. So in the next video, we're going to start using the continuity equation to solve uh, the carrier distribution. So N and P as a function of X and time uh, within the N region and the P region on each side. And then that is going to give us the current as a function of voltage within the diode. And so I hope you like this video. If you have any questions or comments, just post them down below. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.